Hello and welcome to Warblog. Today we're looking at Talafar, August 2017. Um, it's an interesting game. Sort of, well, maybe it's not interesting for the game wise, but basically it's the second time I've done the map wrong. I did it wrong. I loaded it up with the map right, but it only had a whatever the width is by a certain height, and it sort of cut off there. And I'd already done most of it, and I thought, oh, we have to do it again. I did. Um, and I'm pretty glad I did actually because it keeps the bottom bit on. You can sort of see with their sort of new area, would have cut it off otherwise. And I don't know, just lose a little bit of the the fullness of what's going on at the moment. Um, and the last I read, they were sort of preparing, maybe they've started because um, that was a few days ago. Um, but yeah, obviously, you can sort of see the, the areas now. Well, that's wrong, isn't it? Let me do that. One minute, one minute. Okay, that should sort that out. Yeah. Down to there. Yeah, but as I was saying, I mean, basically, what you've got here are the uh, the Kurds who sort of control this sort of border along here. And obviously, then the. Um, Syrian Arab Army, and you can pretty much see the zone of control around to there. So we've got an interesting sort of feature with this river, and um, the thing, the most striking thing about this game, in total, is the um, is the size of it. There's a lot of units spread over a lot of distance. Um, obviously there's a lot of these units and I don't know what the balance will be, I don't think it will be that difficult um, but you've got options for strategy um, you know whether you want to start at this end and just sort of whittle down or whether you just want to go straight in for Telefar and just take that out and hope the rest will basically fade away um, you, you know but obviously you've got to think about strategy because if you do that and a lot of these units will just pile into there, but you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I was obviously just like opened this up, but I mean, the first thing you've got to do is start looking at the units. And one thing I have done, uh, I'm not trying to be completely mean, but um, I've put in a lot of infantry units because the infantry are not that good. Um, but there's a big armored sort of unit down here. Um, here we've got the airport. And in there we've got one, two, three, three artillery companies with a range of eight with a lot of infantry to, to, to defend them. Now, the whole idea is you're not really supposed to move those out, but that would give you a nice field of fire. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You, you, you know, you're going to be looking at sort of a field of fire across there. Everything in here can be hit while this artillery post. So, um, there's no evidence for that, but I, I thought, you know, what I would do is, seeing I've got these eight units, I'll sort of put them in there. It just gives them the opportunity to keep essentially shelling Telefar, which I think is what, what I read they, they, they're sort of going to do. And obviously there's some air support, um, but you can see that there's a lot of units. Now, the one thing I haven't done is actually go through and done a basic sort of sanity check as to whether or not there are there's any sort of balance in the units. Now the only thing to say about the YPG, the Kurds, is that they are non-combatants. So if this is the first time you've been sort of watching one of these videos, it means that these units can't do anything. They don't move. Now I've doubled them up and they're dug in. So they're worth like four um, on their own, dug in to eight. Um, the the I, ISIS probably isn't really going to spend much time fighting them, and the only thing if they did, we wouldn't be able to respond. Um, but really, they're just sort of, sort of there because they are there. And the thing that you've sort of got to possibly bear in mind is, as a sort of um, consideration, is you know when you play, do you actually respect the fact that there is a front line with the, with the uh, Kurds and actually maintain this front line? Which you know, I would advise you do because otherwise you can't just because they're not going to move. It doesn't mean you can't just sort of pretend you don't have to defend against them. So all these units are 
you know, they should remain static, and you know, you should lose brownie points if you remove them to d defend against the Syrian Arab army, um, unless it's a strategic move. In the, you know, for example, I mean, if, if you take these unit, if you take, you know, if these Syrian Arab army take this and this, you would then have a legitimate reason to re remove all of these back down here, etc., uh, etc. Et I mean, you just wouldn't live even there without. When, when, when sort of you know other issues took precedence, so you know the same thing here. I mean, if you came down here and took all of this, you would have some rights maybe to move these two units down here to sort of you know complete a front line there, etc. etc. Um, I'm not sure really what to do because again, I think there's a hell of a lot of well, this you know, there's a hell of a lot of planning and, and thinking and strategy that needs to be applied for something like this, um, and I'm just not sure where to even begin. You, you know, I mean, I think, I think the first move would be to organise what I call battle groups. So, for example, you've got a battle group up here, but to sort of arrange it in a way that makes sense, because you've got armour, you've got mechanised, but not a lot, a bit of motorised, and then a lot of infantry with the rockets and the artillery. So, you might sort of think, well, OK, well, I'm going to form these up in a way that is visibly... Um, helpful to make a strategy. So my first move I think would be to completely present a reorganize everything so that this battle group was sort of spread perhaps along these two hexes here. like that and then I could sort of visualize what I've got in there maybe start attacking this with some artillery but positioning things without any commitment to engage in any way um, similarly here I probably leave that all in there probably leave that there because they're just infantry units these infantry units are probably I think there's three of them so I probably would probably push them forward although they can only move one turn, so... But here, I think I would be again looking to move that line like that to manoeuvre this like this, perhaps spread them out into threes and spread that out. Um, here, I think spread that, I think that would probably hold or move laterally like that and then here move along there and that gives me a much broader spread so I've only got one hex there I mean this you know sort of got another hex there and I can think oh hang on you know what can I start moving into those hexes and how will my battle groups work you, you know for example we've already identified up here we do have what we can, might consider a battle group uh, you, you know, how strong is it, and what are the targets and objectives. Obviously, that keeps its own little front there, that has its own little front there. So, again, there's only little space, spaces. And so then I'd be looking to sort of move these two units here. And this is the, the, the strategic options. Do I want to face them straight into Tel Afar? Or do I want to sort of use these to head, say, you know, to, to, do, to do something different and perhaps to move straight through here to get a breakthrough around here and to start causing chaos in here. So, for example, I could move them somehow straight this way with this unit here moving straight this way and then breaking through like this. create a pocket of some sort. So these units can then form that line along there 
and these units can sort of draw along here and then with that we can then basically take out all of this I mean this is very very sort of high level thinking I mean it's just a first thought um, the map's so small on my computer screen that I'm not sure I can really um, consider everything in, uh, about what that involves but what, what I'm saying is, is doing something first to sort of isolate a, a, a large part of the ISIS force and to destroy them and then to basically be able to push perhaps like this come straight through here deal with that straight through here dealing with that that and then basically have this as a front line into there and then obviously the coup de gras into there but basically creating up just whittling down everything around everything else until we can get to that sort of situation where we can completely surround Tel Afar and then bit by bit whittle into it. Now you might sort of think well why not just go straight for it? Well of course we could um, Okay, um, I mean, we, we could. We could just sort of use that. So we've got the 8 radius. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So something like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got a fire zone across there. Um, we've got that little unit there. And then this could battle straight through here. We could just punch straight through. I'm pretty sure we should be able to do something with this unit coming along there, battling straight through and driving a straight line straight through here before we do anything else with these units coming straight down here like that. And then once that is all captured, for example, we could then start to push up this way and this way, moving in in some kind of line like that and move in this way. I mean, either way, it's all sort of the same, but I think I think the problem with that sort of strategy is we're committing a lot to a very tough cookie right from the start. Whereas this unit, and if we can maintain a strong defensive line, because ISIS are not in a position to really counterattack too much, although they did counterattack over here. Um, so you know and, and they will counterattack but if we if we do something like that they could very easily then legitimately move some of these units away to basically start attacking this battle group because although it, it's quite big it's got smaller units in it and these are our regular units they've got anti-tank in there um So, I mean, you know, they've got insurgents. If you actually start looking through these stacks, you know, they've got insurgents. They've got a lot of air defence. Um, you know, they've got artillery. Right? They've got rockets. Uh, they've got armour in there. They've got anti-tank. They've got a lot of infantry. It's all fortified. Um, it's all sort of dug in in hills. So, you know, in this stack alone, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, um, 16. So that has 16 um, doubled in a hill, 32, trebled for fortifications, 96. So we're going to get 96 factors, and that's just that one alone. Well, that's that's a big one, but you, you know these numbers are pretty big. Uh, uh, you know we're looking at having to get you know a hundred or so, and I mean it's not going to take long before they start moving these units in there, start falling these units back. This is going to be really tough. We're better off actually getting all these units to stop them from fighting in there, and to spend all that time just artillery shelling it so that they're not worth anything by the time we come around to dealing with it. Okay, it's 15 minutes. I deliberately didn't move anything because there's no point. It's too big a game. But um, I hope that intrigues you. It's a fantastic map. And um, I'll speak to you later. Cheers. Bye.